What's up guys, Kronz here and welcome back to Everlasting Summer. Where we last left off, we were in the middle of a lunch or dinner break and we had a cutlet stolen from us. But apart from that, we were getting along quite fine in our new environment. And indeed, Uliana's plate was empty and it seemed that this little girl eats as fast as she does steal someone's cutlets. Take it easy, we'll work something out now. She grabbed my plate and ran off. There was no point in following her. If they wanted to poison me in here, they could have done it in a much easier way. About a minute later, Uliana returned and handed me the plate with a steaming hot cutlet on it. So she did return it. That's good. Mm. Here's one for the starving. Cheers. It was all I could say. I was so hungry that my suspicions were gone in a flash. I picked up the cutlet with my fork and... What the? Ew, that's a cat... And a centipede. No, no, not a bug, not a bug. An insect. It got legs and it's wriggly. The plate fell to the floor and broke into pieces. The chair hit me hard on my leg while falling. I've disliked insects since I was a child, but when these creepy crawlies appear in my plate, that's just too much. You little... Uliana seemed ready for such a twist and was already at the door, laughing as if she had just heard a fresh stand-up comedy joke. I dashed after her. That was mean. That was really mean. We were just a few dozen meters apart, running out of the cantina, and I felt I would just catch this little girl easily. We ran through the square, past the club's house, and ran onto the forest path. I started to gasp for breath. I should have quit smoking, I guess. Probably. Uliana passed out of sight on the next turn. It can't be true that she managed to get away from me. It simply can't. I mean, that, that was a really, really mean joke. I stopped and tried to catch my breath again. Hmm. Night was falling. Oh yeah, it was dinner. It was dinner, not lunch. Looks like I'm lost. It's a bad idea to stay at the woods at night. In the woods at night. It's better get back to camp. However, I had absolutely no idea where that was. Well, gotta choose at random. Hmm. <laughs> Beautiful. I wandered for quite some time in the forest and even thought of crying for help. But finally I saw the camp's fence beyond the trees. Everything fell back into place. The bus is gone, I mumbled quietly. On the one hand, there was nothing strange about that. The bus couldn't just stay there forever, but on the other hand, it meant that there was someone driving, because buses do not drive themselves, usually. And uh, yeah, we didn't see a driver, did we? Or do they? This world seemed too normal, but every event here had at least two explanations for it. An ordinary, real, everyday explanation, and a surreal one. Certainly, the driver could have just been off for a snack and I left too soon, and that's why. In any case, this is not the place for me. Whether that bus drives itself or not was probably an important question, but it was much more important to know how I had got here at all, and where this here was. Fields in the woods stretching towards the horizon had no answers. There was nothing familiar about them. Yeah, probably not. Hmm. A strange, odd, and alien world, yet really beautiful. However, at the same time, it was absolutely not frightening. Either my self-preservation instinct decided to resign from its job, or all this running around the camp and the local pioneers had lulled me so much with their carefree normality that I was simply forgetting what had happened to me just a couple of hours ago. Although I probably just had no strength left to worry, also possibly true. All I wanted was some peace, calmness. I wanted to just have a break from it all. And only after that would I continue looking for answers, ready and reloaded. However, that would be some time later. And what about now? Can I allow myself to relax? This guy is really like a very... He thinks too, he thinks too much. He thinks too much. I'm sure you guys agree. <laughs> okay, now it's really night time. It got completely dark. And in any case, it was better to spend the night in the camp. It's the lesser of two evils. I was about to head back when someone came up silently from behind. Uh, Slavia. Hello, what are you doing here so late? Oh yeah, praise. 
I need to remember the names I'm giving them. The praise. Hello, what are you doing here so late? It was praise standing before me. I was so surprised that I jumped. Well, yeah. So you didn't catch Oliana, did you? No. She smiled. I nodded disappointingly and sighed. No wonder. No one ever has. Yeah, she's a real rocket girl. She could have found a better use for her energy than looking for adventures. You must be hungry. You didn't manage to have dinner after all. Indeed, I had completely forgotten about my hunger. But after these words of hers, my stomach drew attention to itself by giving a treacherous rumble or a whale's call. Prey smiled. Let's go then. What, is the canteen still open? It's all right. I have the keys. The keys? Yes, I have the keys to all the facilities in this camp. How come? Well, I am something like the camp leader's aide here. I see. Well, let's go then. It was an offer you can't refuse. When we reached the square, Prey stopped in the tracks. Excuse me, I should warn my roommate that I'll be late. She's so punctual herself that she'll be worried otherwise. You go on to the canteen and I'll come in a minute, alright? Alright. I really did not expect to find somebody aside from myself there at such an hour. And that somebody was apparently trying hopelessly to open the door. Without any secret thoughts, I walked up onto the porch. The lockpicker turned out to be Elisa. I should have probably kept off and waited. She looked at me intently for a while, then said, Don't just stand there. Give me a hand or something. Meaning? Help me open the door. <laughs> Why? Because I want some buns and kefir. Dinner wasn't big enough. Uh, kefir is like a... It's like a yogurt type thing in Greece and Russia. Some Americans drink it too. Um, is that really a good idea? Are you hungry yourself, huh? Well, then I didn't let you have a normal dinner, did she? She smiled sarcastically. It's true, she didn't. It's fine, praise will come now and... What? Guess I shouldn't have said that. Wow, look at her face. I'm off then. And you'll pay for this. You owe me two already. The hell? Having said that, Alisa disappeared into the night. And what was the first one? I'd have no idea. Praise didn't keep me waiting for long. For too long. Is everything alright? Yeah, why are you asking? No reason, it's nothing. It would be better if I didn't tell her about Elisa. Everything's fine. I said that and immediately heard a note of dishonesty in my voice. Well, shall we go? said Praise. As for Praise, she seemed not to have noticed anything. Or at least she was pretending she hadn't. We entered the canteen. <clears throat> By the way, I must excuse my poor reading skills last time. Rabotnitsa is a worker that's on the... Your left. No, 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 you're right. <laughs> you're right. It's not a mirror. Uh, it says... Rabboni says it's just a person who works. I don't know why I couldn't read that. And the other one is... Actually, there was no other ones. Yeah. Wait a bit, I'll go get something. I sat down on a chair and obediently waited for my saviour. Oh, my dinner was simple. A few buns and a glass of kefir. That's nice. No wonder, I bet Hungry Pioneers finished everything off. However, even that was far better than most of my usual diet. Prey sat across the table and looked at me while I was eating. Is there something on my face? No, just... She smiled. So how did you like your first day in the camp? Well, I don't really know. It's silly to ask someone who suddenly found himself in a different reality whether he liked the food in the canteen, the camp leader, or his assigned hut. It's alright, you'll soon get used to it. Prey stared out the window dreamily. Frankly speaking, I have no desire to get used to such things, but as for her, she doesn't know. Or at least she wants me to think that she doesn't. Well, all in all, it's nice here. I had to somehow break the awkward silence. Do you think so? She asked without any interest. Yeah, this place is so... I want to say retro, but I managed to hold that back. 
After all, it was retro for me, but what about them? It might be the only kind of life they knew. If the term life was applicable here at all. So how? She watched me closely, as if something important depended on my answer. Well, I don't know. Lovely. Yeah, it's lovely here. It is. I guess you're right. She smiled again. It's very good that you think so. Why? Well, not everybody likes it here. And what about you? Me? Yes. I love it here. It's great. They don't need to worry about what other people think. Well, I don't really worry. She laughed. This conversation seemed to be leading me far astray from where I wanted to get to. And you're worried about yourself. Really? Why do you say so? Well, when someone is chewing so intensely... I'm sorry. It's okay. I couldn't bring myself to be more cautious around this girl. But why her in particular? Why not any other local inhabitant? Every one of them seemed so completely normal to me. Precisely normal. So normal it sends chills down my spine and into my marrow. Normal, not like a neighbor with a power drill in one hand and a subwoofer in the other. Not like a passenger you can often meet in a subway or on a public transport. Not like a co-worker at the next table in an open plan office. And not even like a friend who only differs from other humans in his constant insistence. All of them look normal, as I would expect them to be, with their own downsides but without any superpowers. And praise, she was also... Cute? I glanced at her stealthily, not knowing what to say. I'm sorry, I wanted to show you the camp, but it was run off my feet. I... I didn't miss anything while on my own, I guess. Are you sure you haven't missed anything at all? She smiled so brightly that I had to drop my eyes in confusion. Well, how would I know? It's my first day here. Okay, and what have you seen so far? I've seen the square, this canteen, the football pitch. And what about the beach? Just from afar. You really should go there. Oh, let's do it together. Yeah, okay, we will. Her naturalness seems to scare me. But then I thought, what if everything that happens here is how it's supposed to be? And this world looks strange only to me, while for them it is normal. Maybe I was thrown into the past? Yeah, that would explain a lot. Can I ask a stupid question? No. She smiled and stood up from the table. It's late. Can you find the way to Olga Dmitrievna by herself? By yourself? Of course I can, but why should I go there? She'll settle you with someone. What for? Probably this question seems stupid because praise bursts into good-natured laughter. You need to sleep somewhere, right? That makes sense. Fine, I'll be off then. Good night. Night. Why can't I ask my stupid question? It's strange that she left in such a hurry. I was probably going to ask what year it was or something. A bundle of keys left in the door lock caught my attention. I was going to catch up to praise, but where does she live? And knocking on every door during the middle of the night didn't sound like a bright idea. It wasn't. Um, yeah, I'm going to take the keys, of course. I better take them. I'll give them back tomorrow because who knows what happens here at night. Such thoughts gave me chills. It's me who needs to be careful here in the first place. The night, though dark, wasn't silent at all. One could hear chirping crickets, the songs of the night birds and rustling trees from everywhere. By the way, that car is a Jaguli. I'm not sure what that translates to, but it's a very popular car in the uh, former Soviet Union. A sudden desire to follow Praise's advice and go to the cabin leader's cabin appeared. I don't know why, but the sight of the unknown bronze builder of communism put me in a constructive mood. I sat on the bench and started to recall everything that happened today. That was all my constructive move could offer. He was much brighter than near the canteen, and tardy pioneers were running by. So this place didn't seem scary at all. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty well lit, right? Bus, summer camp, girls. I was so tired from everything new and strange that I could not come up with a single explanation for what was going on. I heard a barely noticeable rustle nearby. 
I shivered and looked in that direction. A girl, reading a book. Oh, Lena. Yeah, Sarah. I decided to move closer and talk. She's always reading a book. She was the only new person I had met here without exchanging even a few words. Hi, what are you reading? Sarah was so surprised that she even jumped, well, of course. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Never mind. She blushed and stared at the book again. So what are you reading? What are you reading? On the cover was written, Gone with the Wind. Ah! Yeah, Gone with the Wind is a very popular book in uh, Russia. If you don't know what it is, it's a book about the civil war in the United States. Um, praise the book, as I just did. A good book. Thanks. Honestly speaking, I haven't read it, but I think that such literature suits her quite well. Sarah didn't seem to be interested in continuing the conversation. Well, if I'm bothering you... No. She answered while still looking at the book. I think she wants to be left alone. Can I sit beside you for a while? Why? And really, why? <laughs> maybe just because I was very tired and having company is better than being alone. And maybe I wanted to try to find something out from her. I carefully examined Sarah. But now, I doubt that. Well, I don't know, I'm not allowed to. Feel free. But if I'm bothering you... No, you're not. I can leave, just say. Everything's alright. Okay then. I sat on the edge of the bench carefully. After such an intense talk, staying here was the last thing I wanted. But it wouldn't be nice to just stand up and leave. That didn't really go well, huh? Sarah hasn't answered anything. It seems I made a fool out of myself. I bet if Uliana was here, she'd have a good laugh at me. Do you enjoy being here? I recall Praise's question and thought it would be a good start for conversation. Yes. She smiled slightly. I guess I'd like it too. She definitely isn't very sociable and probably can't carry on a meaningless conversation as easily as Praise. But there was something about her that attracted my attention. Like a momentary glimpse of a reflection in the glass on a rainy autumn evening which makes you turn around and stare into darkness, searching for something that you saw out of the corner of your eye. Of course you weren't able to distinguish or understand what it was, but it felt so tempting, or intriguing. Sarah was still reading the book without paying any attention to my presence. Yeah, I'm just, uh, just there. And I had no intention of asking her anything about this camp, or this world in general. Beautiful night, yes. How in the world did you start a conversation with her? Probably not when she was reading a book. Better at dinner. It's late, I have to go. Yes, it's quite late. Good night. Night. There was something strange about this girl. At first glance, she's a typically shy and modest pioneer girl, but the mystery of Sarah took its own place in the massive list of mysteries about this camp which I had started to put together in my head. Yes, she's just a girl who's reading a book. Dude, you're overthinking it again. A lazy evening. There's nothing like a good time with nothing to do. I headed toward Olga Dmitrievna cabin. Very hard to say. The light in the house was on. Hello, Simon. You know, I think that poster towards the left is the blue, the blue, the not the Blue Brothers. The Blue Men. You know those guys in the from the 90s? Uh, banging the drums with paint on them and they painted their faces and everything blue. <laughs> that's, I think that's what it is, but for some reason it's black and white. You're quite late. Yeah. I went for a walk to look around the camp. Alright. You'll be sleeping here. She pointed her finger at one of the beds. Right here? I was a bit surprised. Yeah, is something wrong? We're out of three cabins anyway. The camp leader smiled, but I rather think it was just out of politeness. You do want to be a decent pioneer, don't you? There was a clear emphasis on the word decent. Not sure. Yeah, 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 sure. Sure. I was lost in thought for a moment. Don't you mind it, mademoiselle? 
Mademoiselle. She looked at me oddly, with surprise and some offense in her eyes. A pioneer should respect their elders, she said strictly. Of course he would, should, no one argues with that. I blathered, not realizing what was wrong. Shouldn't you also? She stared at me. Under such a gaze, even Mithril, forged by the best dwarf masters from the deepest dungeons, would melt. Should I what? What's up, Toots? Annoyance and a lack of understanding made me raise my voice. I have no idea what the hell I'm saying. What does Toots mean? You must address adults appropriately. Yes, of course, there are a lot of strange things here. But this girl is just a couple of years older than me. I mean, she looks like she's... 26? 7? Or maybe even younger. I decided not to argue. While just a few minutes ago, I would have never called her an adult. I have to admit that she was also given a strong character. And in any case, I wasn't in a position to argue. As you say, ma'am... I mean, it's quite weird that I would call her Mademoiselle, Toots and Ma'am in that order. I mumbled something. That's much better. That is how a decent pioneer should conduct himself. And now it's time to sleep. I mean, I didn't call anyone else a Mademoiselle, a Toots, a Toots, Toots, or a uh, Ma'am. Um, certainly not a Mademoiselle. And now it's time to sleep. Honestly speaking, I was going to become neither a decent nor an indecent pioneer. Just yesterday I wasn't going to become a pioneer at all. But do I have a choice now? If you don't want to, we'll have to make you. This is the motto she was probably going to use. I climbed onto the bed and closed my eyes, only to realize how tired I was after today. Something hammered in my head awfully, as if my brains had started a night shift, and they seemed to be aimed more at rolling steel than working on something more sensitive. The bus flew through my mind, and the square with the monument, the canteen full of pioneers and that cutlet that was stolen from me and the malicious face of Uriana. <laughs> uh, praise. Sarah. And even recalling Alisa didn't give me too much of a negative feeling. <laughs> what if I'm here for good? Day two. Ooh, we're on day two. I was having a dream. It seemed like I was in some kind of vacuum with nothing but nothing around me. But not only around, I was the only creature in the universe. As if the universe had returned to a state of singularity right before the Big Bang. And something, something was just about to happen. Suddenly I heard a voice. I could not make out the words, but it sounded familiar. The voice was whispering something gently, as if soothing me, and then I realised... It was the voice of that strange girl from the bus, the girl from the dream. But what is she trying to tell me? Who is she? Who is she? I woke up. Oh, yeah, I think that's definitely the blue men. The blue men? The bl I don't know what they're called. Blue band? Blue man group? They still perform sometimes. Bright sunlight struck my eyes. It was almost noon. Heavy sleeper. After stretching lazily on the bed and yawning, I started to recall the previous day. In a few seconds, all its events passed before my eyes. The bus, the camp, the local inhabitants. No, that's just wrong. Not this whole situation, not me being here, it was wrong by default. My attitude towards what was happening was wrong. Because yesterday I fell asleep here, just like that. And before that, I chatted nicely with the local pioneers, even managed to crack a few jokes. How could I act like that in such a situation? I should be frightened, startled by every rustling, should avoid all contact with the potentially hostile creatures. <laughs> the last day's events were getting hazy, like I had a hangover. This really feels like the morning after a heavy drinking party. Yesterday's natural, flawless, absolutely normal conduct becomes a nightmare in the morning, a 
grotesque illustration from the Divine Comedy. Yes, it's just like that, and I can't change the past now. Then again, I had probably assessed the situation and was acting accordingly. Accordingly. I glanced around, trying to figure out whether I'd been thrown somewhere else, sir, but Olga Dmitrievna's cabin looked the same as yesterday. Everything seemed to be in its place, except for a pioneer uniform, which was hanging, hanging from the bed head. I fumbled with it in distrust and tried it on. At least this is better than walking around in winter clothes. Wish I could see myself, I bet I look like a clown. And for that, I needed a mirror. At least a tiny one. I finally found one on the wardrobe door. <laughs> Holy! <laughs> Holy! <laughs> I looked at the newfound pioneer and jumped away in surprise. Yeah. There was some teenager on the other side of the mirror. He resembled me, but he wasn't me. Where did the weak stubble go? Where were the bags under my eyes? The slouch? That deathly fatigue on my face? It seemed that I had not been thrown back in time, or into a parallel reality, but instead had simply changed bodies with someone else. Right, that's real simple. Such things happen every day. I took a close look at the stranger and only then realized that it actually was me. It just wasn't today's me. Maybe the one from between my school and university years. Well, at least that's something. There you go, the person in an extreme situation did fail to notice the elephant in the room after all. But the camp leader noticed it and last night she told me off for addressing her without proper respect. Oh! That makes sense. Because I thought she was the same age as me. Yeah, because I'm like 23 or something. Right? Bit odd though. Nah, screw that. <laughs> I doubt my appearance affects anything else, really. If the clock was lying, breakfast was long over. Oh well, I'll try to find something in the canteen again. It worked out yesterday well with praise, didn't it? Those memories made me smile involuntarily. I think I got the hots for praise. The sun was shining brightly outside, a light breeze was blowing. A beautiful summer day. I had not felt so good in the morning for several years. All problems were gone, vanished into clouds that were as white as snow. Olga Dmitrievna came out of nowhere. Good morning, Simon. Good morning. I smiled, doing my best to show that, no matter what, my morning was indeed good. You only arrived yesterday, so I decided not to wake you up. But breakfast? Never mind, here it is. She handed me something in a wrapper, no, in a paper. Judging by the oily stains, there had to be sandwiches inside. Oh, thank you. Now go wash yourself. I was about to leave. Wait a second. She quickly ran into the house and came out with her to shove a small bag into my hands. Inside it I found a toothbrush, soap, a small towel and something else. I did not look too closely. A pioneer should always be clean and tidy. Let me do your neckerchief properly this first time. Yours is askew. You should do it yourself once you learn how to. Do we have to? I'm going to mu wash myself now. Yeah, right, it could get hooked on the tap and strangle me. Fine, later then. And don't forget about the lineup. Pencils, paper, drawing lines. You don't forget such things. What lineup? What do you mean, what lineup? She frowned. It's Monday today, it's Monday. <laughs> Weird, by my approximation, it should have been Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Then again, a shift in the day of the week is hardly the worst thing. Usually we have lineups early in the morning before breakfast. But it's Monday today, so we're having it at 12 o'clock. Don't be late. Alright, but where? At the square, where else? There was no reason to argue. I headed to the bathing place. I knew I could forget about separate showers and toilet, but at the sight of this malfunctioning symptom of decaying socialism, a funny turtle with a tin shell, 
poor taps and a ceramic belly, I felt sick. Yeah, that doesn't look particularly clean. I was not a squeamish person, but standing there I realised there was some level of minimal comfort that I could not do without. It's often like that, when you lose things that you thought were ordinary and common, you suddenly understand just how essential they were. Very true, very true sir. Screw this, as if I have any choice. The water was ice cold. I mean, this looks refreshing. That did not. <laughs> While washing my hands was not an issue, washing my face and my mouth became a big problem. How? Huh? There was no toothpaste in the bag which Olga Dmitrievna gave me. I could brush my teeth without it, but there was a small round box wrapped in the towel. Tooth powder. Cute. One point for me being somewhere in the past. I washed myself quite quickly, also due to the ice-cold water. Someone was coming quickly, or more like running towards me. I turned around. It was Praise, dressed in a tracksuit. This girl will probably look good in anything. Pioneer uniform, bikini, probably even a spacesuit. Yeah, I think I have the hots for her or something, because... Hey there! Oh, hiyo! <laughs> I mean, uh, wasu! Good morning! Yeah. Oh hi yo. Oh hi yo. Oh yeah, real smooth. Why didn't you come for breakfast? I overslept. I said it as if I was proud of it. Oh yeah, I overslept. Yeah. <laughs> but Olga Dmitrievna gave me some sandwiches. Oh great then. Don't forget about the lineup. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. As if I could forget. Right, I gotta run. Enjoy yourself. I will. She went by to me and disappeared around the path's bend. Looks like it's a couple of minutes until the lineup. I should quickly pass by my home to drop off my washing bag and eat the sandwiches, then head to the square. I swung open the door of the cabin leader's cabin. I keep saying cabin leader's cabin. Camp leader's cabin and rushed inside as if jumping into the last car of a departing train. Mm. It didn't turn out to be the best idea, because inside I found Olga Dmitrievna, who was changing. I froze on the spot, trying not to breathe. Finally the camp leader noticed me. Simon! I looked away immediately. Have you heard of knocking? Now get out! <laughs> yeah, that was real clumsy, although I did enjoy the sight. I'm not a perv, I swear. Olga Dmitrievna followed me out in a minute. Here, take this. Now it is your home too. Keys! She handed me a key. I put it in my pocket. Home. Of course, if you disregard how fantastical the current events were, this camp was far from being the worst place on earth. But to call it home, that's just, that's just too much. Just after one day spent here, I doubt I'll ever be able to do so. Alright, let's go, we're late. But what about the sandwiches? Just eat them on the way. We were passing along the lines of the pioneers' cabins while I was tucking into the hammer sandwiches and Olga Dmitrievna kept on talking and talking. She was buzzing like a game of operation with Parkinson's. But I cared about nothing but the food. Understood? Huh? <laughs> what? You weren't listening? Sorry. Today is the first day of your new life as a pioneer. And you should do your best so that it becomes a happy life. Ah, yeah, definitely. I'm serious, a pioneer has many duties. Great responsibility is conferred upon him. To participate in social work, to help his juniors, to study and study and study again. We are here, we here are all like one big family. And you become a part of it. Yeah, a part. I'd even sign a party membership card if it could save me from listening to this nonsense. I hope that after your term here is over, you'll keep the most pleasant memories about our camp. Memories that will last your whole life. And when will this term end? Why do you keep asking silly things? It seems I won't get any information from her, or anyone else really. A shame. This world appears so friendly, but it never bothered to introduce itself to me. Perhaps now I can take things somewhat easier than yesterday? 
It seems like I have some unspoken ceasefire with it. It isn't trying to hurt me, but I'm forbidden from asking questions. Of course, this situation isn't a pleasant one, but what can I do about it? A bad peace is better than a good dispute. The most important thing for you now is to make the best of the time you spend here. I'll do my best. Honestly, I was very tired of this conversation. It would be good to know where that here is, but... We came to the square. The pioneers were already lined up. What, is somebody not here yet? Hmm, nope, all here. She looked around at her brave pioneer troops. All right, go stand somewhere. Weird. Why did she tell me there are no more sleeping places? While the chief was running her mouth about her plans for the week, I stared at the people. So I know everyone here except... Except the uh, black-haired girl. A few heads away from me stood Electronic. A little further, Sarah and Praise. And at the end of the line, Uliana and Alisa. Everyone I had met was here. Well, except the middle one. All good, the middle one spoke about some competitions. And I turned my head, oh, attention to the monument. Genda. I could not remember any revolutionary with a similar name. He had a weird posture, too, as if he was looking around with distrust, maybe contempt, or even disdain. Probably some local leader. Daydreaming again? <laughs> Praise brought me back to reality. Olga Dmitrin stood nearby. Still remember the plan for the week? The plan? I will never forget the plan. Perfect. She looked at Praise. Did you bring it? Yes. Praise handed me a piece of paper. It's a checklist. Here are four tasks to check off. Do it all today. Before you start, sign up for a club. There are some clubs in the clubhouse and a musical club in the separate building. Then, visit the infirmary. And finally, visit the library. Got it? Yes. The checklist seemed like a good chance to find out something, since I had to go to places I haven't been before. Then come on, start now. What about lunch? Don't worry, I'll bring you more sandwiches. The checklist is much more important. Good luck! They departed too fast for me to ask anything else. Miss breakfast and I'll miss lunch too. This ain't good. Maybe I'll manage it in time somehow? Lunch starts at 1pm. Then again, if I'll go there, I might miss a place from the checklist. Uh, it's too early to go to the canteen anyway. Ooh, okay. So there's a lots of stuff here. What do we got here? So these are all places I could go. Uh, why is there someone with a bag over his head? Um... She, what did you say again? Clubhouse. That's right, I need to sign up for a club. I went to the clubhouse. To tell the truth, I've never really liked extracurricular activities. At school, I used to find any excuse to skip extra classes. At university, I had no interest in participating in the student council. I wasn't interested in boxing, aerial modeling, or sewing. So I came here just to check off the box. Nobody was there. I found myself in something like a hut of a junior robot enthusiast. There were wires and simple printed circuits scattered everywhere, chips, and on the table proudly stood an oscillograph. I'm not sure what that is for. I heard voices from another room, and then two pioneers appeared. One was electronic, the other one I didn't know. Hi Simon, we've been expecting you. It seems he knows everything about everyone. Why, why were you expecting me? Well, of course, because you came up to sign up to a cybernetics club, didn't you? He didn't let me answer. And this is Shurik. He's in charge here. I assume there's only two of you in the club? Well, you can say that it's three now. Shurik came up and assertively offered his hand. His face was somewhat familiar. Welcome to the club. Yep. Now I'll show you around. Make yourself at home. Uh, guys, I just wanted to... We're always welcoming new members. 
He said it in such a way that the anthem of the Soviet Union suddenly started playing in my head. <laughs> it's amazing, I even remember the words. In the first grade I had a textbook with the lyrics in the back. No, I, uh, I just wanted to s you, you to sign my checklist. Yep, you sign up to the club and we'll sign your checklist. He grinned. I was getting ready for a long and boring argument and then I heard someone enter. I looked back and saw praise. Ah, Simon, I hope they're not giving you any trouble. She narrowed her eyes, looking at the future of the Motherland's robotic surgery. I know these two. They can. Well, you know, actually, I just need to get my checklist signed. I decided to take advantage of the situation. No problem, give it to me. Simon so took the paper and marched up to Shurik. Sign it. Hold on, we're not done yet. You're done, sign it now. She gave Shurik such a threatening look that it made him lose every possible objection. He wrote some squiggles on the checklist and I thanked Slavia. Then I moved on in a mellow mood. Praise, rather. Then she said infirmary, right? Oh, I can check out the music club. Should I check out the music club? Music club? Yeah, let's go to the music club. The music club, a small one-level building, was located some distance from the other buildings. I opened the door and entered without hesitation. Oh, Bach and Beethoven, and a third guy whom I don't know. There were enough instruments for a whole orchestra here. Drums, guitars, even a piano. I spent some time looking close at every instrument, wanting to guess the time period they were from. But suddenly I heard a crawling sound coming from underneath the piano. Um, uh, a girl looks like she was looking for something. Probably should look away, Simon. Stop getting into these positions. She was standing on all fours in such a suggestive pose that I hesitated to speak at first. Excuse me. Ah! <laughs> Who's there? She probably just hit her head. Yeah, she hit her head. Ouch! She struggled out. Sorry I scared you. It's nothing. Oh, you got a checklist. You must be new here. Ah, yes. My name is Miku. No, really, I'm serious. No one believes me, but it's my real name. My mother's Japanese. Ah, I knew it. She's the girl from the uh, title screen. Miku. You sound Japanese. My dad met her well and he was building. Well, it wasn't him who was building. He was an engineer. And he was working on a nuclear power plant there. Or a dam, or a bridge, or whatever. She was talking so far, she swallowed half the words she tried to pronounce. I'm Simon. <laughs> I'm Simon. Great, want to be in our club? It's only me here now, but it'll be two of us then. Do you play anything? When I became antisocial, I bought a guitar and learned a few chords, but then I forgot about it, and since I quit everything that required more than a couple of hours to learn. You know, I wasn't planning to do anything like that, really. Oh, it's okay, I'll teach you. Maybe a trumpet, for example? How about a violin? I know it all, honestly. There was no point in arguing with the orchestra girl since there was only another cascade of words waiting to blast on me. Hey, I'll think about it. Can you just sign it for now? Yes, yes, sure. Give it to me. Be sure to come around. I sing too. I'll sing you some Japanese folk songs. Or maybe if you're not into that, something more contemporary. That sounds cool. Sure. Thanks. Gotta go now. Of course. Come back anytime. Oh, she's blushing. <laughs> the end of a sentence stayed inside. It might be nice to hang around with the guitar in the evening, but in such company? I turned to leave and came face to face with Elisa. Not you again. She eyed me suspiciously. Why did you come? The checklist. Got it signed? Yeah. Then move it! <laughs> she went inside and I hurried to leave this place. What a weird girl. Alright, the infirmary. I think that was the next thing. What's the point of visiting the infirmary? My health was fine, the fresh local air clearly did some good, I felt fresher than usual. But I just have to visit it, maybe I need to get a vaccine or something. I entered. Ooh, a common infirmary, like my school doctor's room. A middle-aged woman sat at the table. Wow, she has different eyes. What is that called? I don't know. She gazed intently at me, assessing me while continuing to write something. Well, hello, pioneer, said the nurse without being distracted from her work. 
Good afternoon, ma'am. I have something. Sit down, please. I looked around the room. On the couch, I sat down. Strip. She said all of it with an even tone. What for? To inspect, to acetate, to check on your health, you know? You know, they actually did used to do this. I know this for a fact. Not me personally, of course. But I do know that they used to do this in hospitals and stuff. Which is kind of weird. By the way, my name is Violetta, but you can call me Viola. She turned to me. What are you waiting for? Strip. But I have no elf issues. I've got this. I neatly gave her the paper. Later. She took the stethoscope off her neck, seeming like she intended to probe me with it. But then someone knocked on the door. The nurse answered unwillingly. Come in. In a moment, the door opened widely and Electronic rushed inside. Hello. I uh, fell during the football game. Nonsense, of course, but I'm okay. Uh, but Olga Dmitrievna. There was a massive bruise on the electronic's eye. I doubt that this could be a football injury. Yeah, it looks like someone punched him. Sit down, I'll have a look, she said to him. And you, pass me your checklist. The nurse quickly signed it and continued. If something hurts, come to me immediately, pioneer. I decided not to answer and went out, closing door behind me. Yeah, I mean, that's probably weird. I mean, if you're... It's, it's weird if you step back into those old practices. Obviously. And especially everything is already sexually tense. That nurse is surely something else. Indeed. Library. Actually, I love reading, but spending my days in a library under the current circumstances was well beyond my scope. So I better hurry up with this checkpoint. As I stepped inside, a memory from my childhood emerged in my head. Yeah... Книга «Учитель близких товарищ друг». No, wait. Книга «Учитель близких товарищ друг». Okay, so, I mean, the book is your closest friend, and this is Pioneer. Learn. Сражаться за дело рабочего класса. And, you know, fighting for the working class. And this guy looks like Jesus. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not Jesus. Uh, ballet. Some communist other stuff. Communist stuff. That guy... And, uh, yeah, it was very vivid. Yeah, sure does. I'm seven or eight years old. I'm at the library with my mother. While she's looking through the books I might need for my studies, I'm sitting in the corner and looking through their collection of comic books. Back then, I didn't know why they had so many or why I couldn't take some with me. The notion of collective property was something my mind hadn't grasped at that age. However, back then, the whole concept of property was pretty hazy to me. This memory seemed even stranger now, when I was standing in this particular camp, where they might have managed to build communism in three years. Soviet symbols all over the place and a shells of fold of related literature. Of course I wasn't planning to read any of these. Getting acquainted with a full collection of books by is the last thing on earth I would think of. Where's the librarian? I didn't spend much time looking for her. Ah, the black-haired girl's a librarian, maybe, or just... I looked closely. Short hair, thick glasses, rather cute face. She was snoring so peacefully I couldn't just wake her up. I can wait. If she doesn't wake up in half an hour, maybe then. It's a bit weird. I couldn't just sit here, so I took a random book from the nearest bookshelf. Arthur Schopenhauer. In the world as will and representation, I opened it roughly in the middle and started reading. <coughs> The life of a man, with its endless upkeep, wants and sufferings, is to be regarded as the explanation and paraphrase of the procreative act. For example, the absolute claim of the will to live. And furthermore, it is also the reason the man owes nature his death, and thinks with anxiety of this debt. Is this not the evidence that our existence involves guilt? At any rate, we always exist, from time to time paying with death for our birth. We always exist, and alternately, bear all the joy and sorrow of life, since neither of both can pass us without some effect, and that is the result of our stated will to live. Oh, don't you... <laughs> Rubbish! I close the book quickly and put it back into its place. Someone's knocking. What a nice habit, knocking on the door. I should pick it up. It was Sarah. Oh. Hi! I smiled. Hi, I just want to return a book. She had a copy of Gone with the Wind that I saw yesterday. 
Oh, Zhenye is sleeping. I'll come back later. I'm awake. I turned around in surprise to look at her. She eyed me closely from behind her table. What is it you wanted? I need you to check here. Give it here. She quickly signed the paper and gave it back to me. She had this look on her face that made me want to keep quiet. Yeah, I, I, I understand. Lena came up to her to return her book, and I thanked Zhenya and walked out. Sarah and Zhenya. Finally, I got all these signatures. Now I had to go back to Olga Dmitrievna and give it to her. She was sitting in front of her cabin, reading a book. She doesn't look like a good role model for the perfect pioneer that she was planning to turn me into. I wonder if her responsibilities extended beyond giving fiery speeches at the lineup, <laughs> scolding Oliana and getting involved into my moral, physical and ideological growth. Here, I offered her my checklist. She placed it in her pocket without even looking at the signatures. Great, I could have just signed it myself without going anywhere. Perfect, so did you meet our nurse? Yeah. For some reason, for some reason, her questions shouldn't sivers down my spine. Which club have you signed up for? I didn't. I need to think first. That's a pity. It's vital for you to sign in somewhere tomorrow. Of course. Sure. Right. It's time to go to dinner. Already? I was getting hungry. Hmm. I headed to the canteen together with all good dinner. I looked at the sky and noticed that the sun was already setting. On the porch stood Alisa, Electronic. Uliana and Sprays. As we came up, I heard what they were talking about. And never call me Dvachia again or you'll get another one. I didn't call you that, you're hearing things. He did, he did, I heard it all. You weren't even there. I was, I was, in the bushes. <laughs> Come on you guys, stop it. So it wasn't a football injury electronic suffered earlier today. Damn, the nurse did a good job, I couldn't even see his black eye. I was about to comment on that. All good to meet them, I came up to them and asked about the ruckus. What happened? Alisa and Shizuko. I didn't do anything. She shrugged with antipathy and waited inside. Right, dinner time. Oh gosh, I entered last. There weren't too many free seats. There were a few, uh, there were a few free chairs near Alisa, across the canteen. But I'd sooner starve for a week or two than risk my head near her. Me too, brother. Me too. There was also a seat near Aliana, but I'm not into the traditional Chinese whatever crawls cuisine. <laughs> oh, that's a jibe. Finally, a free chair near Miku. Looks like I'll have to pick my poison. You mind if I sit here? Miku. Oh yeah, sure. I mean, no, I don't mind. I mean, yes, you can sit here. I sat down. Look, it's buckwheat today. Do you like buckwheat and chicken? I don't like chicken. Well, not that I don't like it. But if you ask me, would, would I prefer, say, stroganoff beef or rag out or maybe, no, just a hamburger or a rump steak? Do you like rump steak? I'm not that picky about my food. And that's the simple truth. Oh, is that so? But the desserts, you know, they aren't really good here. I like ice cream. Do you like ice cream? I just like 48 kopecks. And then in Gretzke. Oh, sorry, I keep talking about myself. So, 48 kopecks. Leningradske, ice cream brand popular in the late Soviet Union. If you want a good ice cream, you need Eskimo. <coughs> Maybe you like Eskimo better. Oh, I called it. You saw me call it. Yeah, Eskimo. That's a good ice cream. It's basically like a vanilla cone, uh, and it has a like a layer of chocolate around it. And it's it's like it's pretty cheap too. It's like a dollar in American money. Dinner was starting to get on my nerves, thanks to such company. But I'm not the kind of person that can just ignore someone who's talking to them. I don't know, she seems nice. Even a bit if too much good talking, but whatever. We're at the same table, after all. You know, I once bought a waffle cone and started eating, and then you know what? I found a screw there, a real screw! Can you imagine that? Or was it a bolt? I don't really know. <laughs> Screws are those that you tighten with screwdrivers, and bolts are those that you tighten with a wrench, yes? If there was a speed eating contest on, I'd probably be in the top three winners by now. Right, I'll be going. Enjoy your meal. I got up and headed outside. Oh, 
Miko was saying something, but her words were drowned by the crowd of loudly dining pioneers. Yeah, a buckwheat is good. It's good. I wouldn't mind sitting next to a really, really talkative person if I could just enjoy my food. I went out and sat on the stairs, waiting for my dinner to settle down a bit. Yeah, I mean, I ate it in like a minute. Under a minute. I just sat there and watched night falling. Everything is so lively here during the day. Kids laughing and yelling happily, fooling and running around, constant chatter, games going on and swimming at the beach. But after dark, it changes entirely. The sound of day was swapped for silence, only now and then broken by crickets chirping or a night bird. The camp was going to sleep. In every shadow you could see things, maybe a ghost, or a spirit of the forest, or a wild animal. A human being would, the last, would be the last thing to expect, and that is how it looked last night, and now. I mean, it looks, looks fine. The locals followed their routine very strictly. In the day, the camp was theirs. In the night, it belonged more to the forces of nature than to humans. Huh. Someone touched my shoulder. I looked back. It was electronic. Sup, dude? Let's go play cards. Cards? Yeah, I invented a new game, a good one. Good, like how? Well, first we get to find the cards, and then I'll tell you. <laughs> then go find them, what's the problem? Only Olga Dmitrina has them, and she won't give them to me. Why so? Well, the last time when we... Olga Dmitrina and Slavia came out onto the porch. Olga Dmitrina, Simon just asked you about the possibility of getting playing cards. Actually... For what purpose? We invented a new game. Not we, you did. What game? I need the cards to show you. Hmm, I don't like this. Well, if Simon is with you, then perhaps it's okay. To be really honest, we'll go fetch them together, all good, Vitera. Go get the cards with Slavina. I'll go with her. If you don't mind. Sure, let's go. We headed towards my cabin. Roughly halfway there, Prey stopped. Hey, I just remembered, the cards are in my cabin. Good timing. And where's that? It's just down this road, let's go. We reached a cabin that in fact looked more like a trailer. Just wait here a minute, I'll be back. It took her a few seconds to come back. There, she showed me a deck of pretty worn out cards. Then, these must be marked in and out. That's unsportmanlike. What happened to fair play? Tell me about it, it's hard to cheat when you don't know the rules. Shall we go? Let's go. On our way back, I decided to try and find out something. How long have you been here? In this camp? About a week. I see, and where did you come from? I'm from the north. That is... The cold north. She looked at me and smiled. Looks like nobody in this camp is inclined to answer even the most innocent of questions. I tried to approach from another angle. And what do you like? What do you mean? Well, your hobbies. Oh, I like nature. Oh, she looks like, uh... What is the girl from Frozen? The girl from Frozen. Strange, she's not very talkative today for some reason. Nature, I see. Want to become a natural historian? More like a normal historian. I'm always always interested in our nation's history. That would suit her quite well. Indeed. It appeared that among all the locals, she was the only one with nothing to hide. What if she came here just like me and simply could not trust anyone enough to tell? I tried testing the waters. And why did you choose this? I didn't. My parents got a voucher for me from their work. Another idea. Well, if you could choose. It's nice here. I don't think I'd choose some other place even if I could. Here it's like you're becoming another person. That wasn't how I saw it. What do you mean another person? It's just that there are so many possibilities. You can learn so much. Meet so many new interesting people here. Now she started to sound like our chief, which raised a red flag for me. I decided to stop with the questions for now. When we came back, Olga Dmitrovna told praise. I just remembered that the cards were at your place. It's okay, we got it. Good, good. Praise and Olga Dmitrovna went inside. I was going to follow, but someone grabbed my hand. At least. 
Her gaze sent a shiver down my spine, and not a nice one. You want something? I asked carefully. You're going to play this stupid game then? Yeah? Anything wrong with that? No, nothing. She was turning to leave, but then slowly looked back and smiled. So you play cards? A little. I couldn't figure out what she wanted. So only Durak and that's it. Durak, yeah, a card game popular in the USSR similar to President. As if you're a poker star. Well, yes, technically. Then you don't have a chance. Why? Because... So you know the rules. Of course. Well then, you'll have the upper hand. I couldn't see why we'd go on talking and motion towards the door. Why do you keep trying to leave? Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Bitch. Let's make a bet. What do you mean? You're in such a slowpoke, the cards, what else? And what do you want to bet on? That I'll win. That's quite possible. I agreed calmly. So, are you afraid? No, I'm not. I'm not big on bets and I don't like my chances. And you're not big on taking risks too. Such an astute observation. I'm impressed. Right then, I... No, you're not. Now what? I sighed in exhaustion. She was starting to annoy me with her rubbish talk about some pointless bet. If you don't bet with me, I'll tell everyone that you tried to seduce me. What? You heard me. I could imagine her doing this. Don't be stupid. Who's gonna believe you? I've been here less than two days. Besides, want to try your luck? Right. And what will happen if I win? I won't tell anyone anything. And if I lose? Slowpoke mode again? I'll tell everyone who tried to seduce me. I told you already. So you're telling me now that I have to work to prove that I didn't do anything when I didn't actually do it. If that's how you want to look at it. Not a simple decision. On the one hand, it was stupid to agree. I didn't know the rules and gambling wasn't my thing, which is a smart choice. Don't gamble, people. On the other hand, she could really make my life hell. Then again, can I even trust her? She can do it even if I do win. So, have you made a decision? I was going to answer, but suddenly Sarah came around me from behind. What? Nothing. Sarah hurried inside. So? I'm going to bet with her. I may regret it a hundred times. Fine, I'll do it. She smiled. But if I win, yeah, yeah, all fair, no cheating. Alyssa turned, went up the stairs and inside the canteen. Why am I doing this? Because she can set me up regardless, right? If she, if she wants me to, if she wants to. Since she decided to, anyway. I let out a heavy sigh and followed her through the door. Inside, everything was ready. A few pioneers stood here and there, chatting. The tables were moved out of the way to make room for players and spectators. I looked around. Something was going on in the far corner. When I came closer, I saw a large piece of paper with a diagram written on it. Oh gosh. And my name was among the players. And who came up with all this? I patted Electronic who was standing near. Well, of course, it was your most humble servant. He bowed to me jokingly. This made me uncomfortable to the point of squirming. And why in the world am I among the players then? I was disappointed. A few seconds ago, I thought I had a slim chance to evade this tournament. Then I wouldn't have to fear Elise's revenge for losing the bet with her. But now that hope was gone. It was pure coincidence. Yeah, right, coincidence. Except that I was already acquainted with every one of the contestants. While there were a few dozen other pioneers standing in the room. Whom I didn't know, I suppose. I was seized by anxiety. It's a feeling of being watched while standing in an empty room with no windows and doors. Will there be a prize? I asked him lazily. I wanted to distract myself with a pointless conversation. Electronic was just about to answer when Oliana came out of nowhere and started jumping around him. Prizes! Prizes! I heard something about prizes! Do you know what is the main ethos of the Olympic Games? It's not the winning, but the taking part that counts. Yeah, you win your prizes that you participated, right? 
A what? <laughs> no. You'll understand when you grow up. She made a wry face and jabbed Electronic in the ribs. So what about the prize? Well, I don't know. It's not up to me. He made a helpless gesture. Really, if they came up with a stupid game, at least they could give the winner a chocolate medal or something. Right? <laughs> Odiana Sunday jumped and raced off to somewhere. I wish I was that optimistic. So what about the rules? Wait a bit. Not everyone is here yet. I looked around the canteen. Alisa, Prey, Sarah, Miko and Shurik were there. It seemed like everyone is here. Not everyone. Genya isn't here. Does he feel uneasy or is it just me? She's not here, so what? Pick someone else instead. No, I can't do that. He answered slowly. I decided not to ask exactly why he can't do this. Well, go fetch her or something, I don't know. He can't go, he's the host of the event. The camp leader appeared as if from nowhere. But Olga Dmitrievna... Electronic whined. Simon will go. Damn it. <laughs> right, Simon? She looked at me and smiled. No. Of course, who else? Where is she? In the library, I guess. Alright. I dragged my feet towards the door. Please, hurry. What's Electronic's problem, anyway? Night is coming soon. I was going to take my time, so I slowly paced towards the library. But I found Jenny before I even expected. She was sitting on a bench at the square, staring at Gender, who was silent as always. What are you doing here? Everyone is looking for you. Sitting here, as you can see, as you can plainly see. She frowned. Well, let's go. I don't want to. She looked away. Why not? I don't want to. I sat beside her. Listen, I don't like the idea of this contest myself, but we can't let everyone down. I surely didn't sound like myself there. A couple of days ago, I wouldn't even think of saying something like that. Jenny looked at me with surprise on her face. So everyone is waiting for me? For me? Isn't that what exactly I just said? Duh. <laughs> I won't go anyway. She frowned and hid her face. But why? I gestured with my arms, wondering. I don't know how to play cards. So what? Same problem here. Then how can you play? You just pretend to know what you're doing. That's what most people do in life. What, you can only do things that you read about in books or something? Of course. And now with the viewers. Wait, why is that in Russian? She was surprised. And what if you end up in Antarctica and have to rely on hunting polar bears to survive? Polar bears don't live in Antarctica. Jenny smiled. Doesn't matter, it's just an example. Come on, it's not like someone's life is depending on the result. She took her time to think. I just want I just don't want to let anyone down. Right. I agreed sarcastically. <laughs> yeah. And don't you think anything funny about that? I didn't get what she meant, but anyway, whatever. Obviously, everyone has their weak spots. In a minute, we were both back at the canteen. Everyone looked at Electronic. So... Each round consists of one game. In case of a draw, you replay the game. After this, the loser drops out and the next round begins. Since the number of volunteers... He looked at me. Since the number of players is just eight, we have only three rounds. Is everything clear? Whoa! <laughs> and what are the prizes? The prizes! What are they? The prizes. The prizes, man. What are the prizes? Slavia! Uliana! What are they doing? Chasing each other. I won't rest until the prize is mine! Seemed like this girl alone had enough energy for a warp jump to Alpha Centauri. That's a good way of saying it. Prizes! Prizes! She repeated it over and over. Stop it! Praise tried to reason with her. Electronics seemed to be getting dizzy from all this running around. Let's start already, I said calmly and added to Eliana. I don't think there's any prizes. Looks like my argument got through to her, so she took her place. Praise followed her, giving me a grateful smile as she passed. The pioneers finally settled down. I approached the table that Sarah sat behind. You don't mind? She looked up and blushed. Don't worry, I don't know the rules myself. And how can I be sure that it's not only myself? I sat down. Turns out we'll have to play the first round together. Yeah. Finally, Electronics started to explain the rules. Oh gosh. 
This is an actual mini game thing. Look at the cards carefully. Okay. There are exactly six of them in front of you. Yeah, I can count. Oh well, it has the uh, entire cast of. Uh, I think that's the entire cast on the cards. I hope everyone here here knows how to count. <clears throat> now you can look at them. Ooh, a Joker eight. I can't see behind you, electronic. After everyone had a look at the cards, electronic moved on. Okay, nine three J M. Okay, the rules here are similar to poker. I hope everyone knows how to play. Not me. I knew the rules but wasn't so sure about the others. First of all, it's a top card, then one pair, then two pairs, then three of a kind. Okay. Okay, no flushes or straights though. Okay, so poker without flushes or straights. Poker without flushes, okay. Okay, alright. In first round, you choose a card which you would like to take from your opponent. Is anyone else finding this a bit confusing? Okay. In turn, your opponent can choose to swap two of his cards round twice. Or he can choose not to do so, if he doesn't need the card which you are taking. Take a note here that your opponent can see which cards are trading places. The next step, your opponent can take the card he chooses. And so on, I think that's pretty clear. It wasn't too clear to me. Hey you, Einstein! Uliana yelled at him from the table. I didn't get a thing. You'll figure it out as we go. I, I guess I will too. Okay. Electronic went to the table with the diagram, leaving Oliana to smolder in solitude. I think we're all smoldering. We have this weird creature. 3, 9, an ace, a 10, 8, and a joker. Electronic went to the table with the diagram, leaving Oliana to smolder in solitude. You go first. I hoped I could get my round. I hoped I could get my mind around the game fast enough. You can hope all you like, it won't change this thing. Sarah, more perplexed than usual, reached out for my cards. In the middle of the table, her hands stopped. Will you? Oh yeah, I should be protecting my card. What was it Electronic said? To try to confuse my opponent, I can swap two of my cards. Twice. Or I can choose not to. Should I protect it or not? By the way, I can also agree and give her the card she chose straight away. Otherwise, see, she can change her mind and take another card if she wants to. Or she might not. Okay, game phase, defense, rounds left. Okay. So, do we need this? Well, if it's like poker, I need... Obviously, I'll need the ace, the joker, probably an eight. What's statistically probable? Electronic was certainly watching our game, nodding in approval. Looks like now we're getting somewhere. We No, we're not. Now, during the round, opponents trade cards three times. Keep an eye on each other. Penetrate your opponent with your eyes. I chuckled. Penetrate. Yeah. <laughs> What's so funny? Uh, never mind. I tried to keep a straight face. He stared at me for a moment. Then moved on. And then we turn up the cards to see whose hand is better. Electronic went back to his diagram. Very well. You can have it, whatever. I, I, I don't know what the hell is going on. Okay, capture. Let's take this card. This is going to take some getting used to. Okay, we've got a six. We have two, two sixes. Uh, no, let's let's try to keep our sixes. Sure, take it. Hmm. All right. What is this? What is this? Now it's my turn. Capture. No idea what the hell is going on. So we capture each other's cards, but what happens? Yeah, take it. You can take it. Okay, we got a nine. I won. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> That's funny, look at this. Okay, so I think the highest number is... Oh, is it because I got a pair? I got a pair of sixes. Pair of sixes. I think that's it. 
Okay, so this is sort of like poker, I guess, except we're flipping all the cards over. Okay, so I won. I won the first round. I won! Seriously, it's hard to play a game that was made up on the spot and not by yourself either, but I won. Although the moment of glory was tainted by the fact that it was Sarah who was the loser. She's not very confident in general, but now she's lost. I'm too embarrassed to even look at her now. Probably I should have lost to boost her self-esteem, but I have a bet. Yeah, I can't lose that. Meanwhile, Electronic proudly announced that the first round is over. Yes, a list of those who made it into the second round appeared on the scheme after a little while. Oh gosh, I'm going up against Uliana. Semi-final pair consisted of Alisa vs. Eugenia and Uliana vs. me. A doom sigh escaped me. Uliana immediately took a seat in front of me. She glared at me, grinning. How did you manage to outplay Sarah? Cheated, perhaps. I'm not you. I'm not you. Burn. I just know how to play cards. At least that's what I want her to believe. And how could you outplay Shurik? Ah. <laughs> Waved her hand, showing how easy it was. I threatened to join his club. <laughs> uh, she grinned yet again. So she blackmailed him into losing. Would you hold back too? Not a chance. Ugh. Then I'll choose which card I give to you myself. Did you hear the rules? Ah, screw them. It looked like she really didn't care. Okay, but I choose the cards to give to you too. Deal. Inspired by my victory in the first round, I ventured upon this dangerous move. I could have argued, appealed to Electronic and eventually had my own way, but somehow I felt truly confident in the outcome of this round. Yes, we were breaking the rules, but I was in the same boat as Uliana. I looked up at Electronic. It's time to begin the semi-finals, he commanded. I carefully checked my cards, ensuring that Uliana couldn't see them. I am game. Alright, so we choose which cards. I can capture, right? There we go. Let's give her the three. Do I have to click on it? She gave me a nine. Alright, let's give her a six. Why not? Alright, what, what are you giving me? An ace. Very well. Let's give her back the nine. So we have two aces, a king, a queen, and a joker. Which card now? A three. I won. Well, of course I won. Look at my hand. Two aces, a pair of aces. Yes. Nice. We won. Hey, this isn't fair. You chose the rules. You should have held back and lost. She angrily puffed up her cheeks, making her resemble Humpty Dumpty. Let's have a rematch, but this time you have to hold back, got it? It wasn't only me who heard her, but the entire room. Even Electronic. No rematch is allowed! Uliana completely ignored him. You have to lose! I don't have the slightest intention of playing with you for a second time, I said calmly. Fine, you want it that way? Yeah, that way. Then I'll put the word out that you have sexually harassed Elisa. What the hell is wrong with these people? Seriously. I mean, I, I went into this expecting this, but... Why is everyone blackmailing me? She whispered. What? I leaned over the table and gave her a menacing glare. So you've been eavesdropping, eh? I just heard it while passing by. Anyway, it's much better to play an extra round than... She can certainly do that. I sighed and appealed to Electronic. Not a problem, we'll have a quick rematch. I mean, yeah, I mean, if I don't do it, I am in trouble, and if I do it, I'm in trouble. So yeah, whatever. <laughs> Electronic. He shrugged. So, the rematch has started. Very well then. Now we have to win again. Okay, king, a seven, six, three. Alright, let's get rid of her twos. Highest card wins. What are you giving me? A queen? Alright. Now you can take the three. We need to get a pair. A pair of something. What are you giving me now? 
a two. Damn it. Okay, give back two. And you're giving me a three. Shit. At least I won a single round. I left the canteen. It was still early to sleep and a short walk around looked like a good idea. Where should I head to? Didn't I lose the bet? Am I screwed now? I feel like I might be screwed. What scene? The events of the past day kept flashing brightly in my head. That stupid useless checklist, this foolish tournament. Tonight I had no intention of doing anything or to talking to anybody. The investigation of my complicated situation was the last thing on earth I would do this evening. I headed to the north. At least that's where I thought it was. It was my habit from my youth to go to the north. I liked this part of my hometown more than the southern districts. Travelling to the Black Sea resorts was never my thing either. Boundless forests and fields were much closer to me than beaches and barkens. Several minutes later, an open-air stage consisting of several wooden benches and a platform appeared before my eyes. I climbed onto the stage. So much varied musical equipment, loudspeakers, a microphone stand and even a piano. I imagine a crowd of people in front of me, everyone screaming, shouting my name, myself blinded by the spotlights. I imagine a guitar in my hands and attempted to play a long and striking solo. I suppose it looked pretty funny from a stranger's point of view, a weird guy swinging his arms on stage, jumping around like an ape and making faces. I hope no one could see me here. Hey! Piped up from somewhere above. I looked up and saw Oriana hanging under the beam under the stage ceiling. And what are you doing here? I'm just... Denial is obviously futile. You saw it, didn't you? I said in frustration and turned away. Oh, I see. A waste of guitar talent in you. I said nothing. Hey, come on, don't frown. It was funny enough. She giggled. Funny enough, eh? I huffed. Yep. Well, then I answered calmly. Come up here, dude. Where to? To me. I ain't gonna get up there. Don't even try to convince me. Not that I have a fear of heights. It's just that climbing up there is pointless, isn't it? No, just get over here. I felt in my bones that something was going wrong, but still slowly headed her way. When I found myself standing under Uliana, she cried out, Catch me! Oh gosh, and jumped. Thousands of thoughts flashed through my mind in an instant. How would I catch her? Is it worth trying? What if she dies? <laughs> what if she breaks my something? Why the hell does this happen to me? That's her own fault, no more fooling around. Wow, what a number of thoughts come and go within the blink of an eye when sometimes many years are not enough to come up with a single idea. At least logic. At last logic and self-preservation instinct won the battle, and I stepped back. Oriana landed gently, tumbled, instantly jumped to her feet and looked at me with offense. Holy moly! Why didn't you catch me? You didn't get hurt, I answered, shifting my glance. What if I did? But you didn't. What's up with you? Watch too many B-movies recently? So you don't care about me? She grinned. Well, in this situation, certainly I do care. I'm flattered. Hey, don't get any ideas. Okay, okay. You're forgiven for the cards. And you are not. I had no time to finish the sentence. Oriana jumped off the stage and vanished in the dark of the night. Yep, one more childish trick from the silly girl. Shoo, I was worrying about her at the moment as I would for anyone else in her place. After once again cursing Oriana in my mind, I headed towards my cabin. For the first time today, I finally felt how tired I was. There was no light in the window, so Olga Dmitrievna must have been sleeping already. Strangely enough, she waited for me yesterday. I entered the cabin, quietly stripped and laid on the bed. When you think about it, my situation hadn't gotten any clearer today. In fact, I've spent the whole day doing useless stuff. I would have never even thought about doing something like this in the real world, although I had plenty of time. How much time I would have here in total is still a mystery. Maybe an eternity, or maybe there are only a few minutes left. I just didn't want to think about the past, about how I got into this camp. For the first time in a long while, I felt really tired. Not only emotionally tired, but also physically tired, psychologically tired, and God knows how else tired. I just wanted everyone and everything to shove off, starting with my own thoughts. I wanted this mess somehow resolved by itself, or at least without my active participation. And what if I'm stuck here forever? Then I'll have to get used to it. 
So just like that, I, I'm not ready. Ahem. My consciousness slowly drifted away from me and it became progressively harder to concentrate on something distinct. Perhaps it's better to wait until tomorrow. I rolled over and fell asleep. I wonder if I can do a rematch of that card game. Am I screwed? Am I screwed? Day 3. Actually, we're gonna cut the episode there, guys. I have no idea what's going on. I'm gonna go test out... I'm gonna go test out... Um, if I can do redo the card game. If not, if I'm screwed... Uh, we'll continue on into the next episode. But for now, 